Confronting cancer statistics is a sobering exercise. For the men in the room, one in every two of us will develop some form of cancer within our lifetimes. And for the women, that number is one in three. One in four of the men will die of some form of cancer, and one in five of the women. All of our families are likely to be touched at some time by the hand of cancer. When we seek treatment for cancer, we've grown used to the idea that chemotherapy will strike a delicate balance between shrinking the tumor and harming our healthy, normal cells. Our hair falls out, we grow weak, we get anemia, nausea sets in, appetites are lost, nerves may be damaged. Today we're going to reimagine frontline cancer therapy and we're going to explore diagnostic and therapeutic implications of a new insight into the fundamental nature of cancers, a wide variety of cancers. This new insight is the result of two decades of basic science research that began by asking a very simple question. What proteins are found in the ovulated egg? After cataloging hundreds of previously unannotated genes and the proteins that are encoded by those genes, my lab group has come to a new understanding. And this understanding into the fundamental nature of cancer is that cancers of many types are reverting and taking on characteristics of the egg, the mother cell, the cell from which we all derive. So let's look through the microscope and begin to look at some of the data that underlies this fundamental insight that cancers are taking on features of the egg. The cells that you see on the left are uterine cancer cells they're stained fluorescent green with a protein we call SAS1B. Those arrowheads show you patches on the surface of the cancer cells where this protein, SAS1B, is located. Aside from cancers, the SAS1B protein is normally seen elsewhere in the body, only in eggs. You can see the egg on the lower right, and above it, there's a patch a green fluorescent patch showing you, it's sort of like a stocking cap. It shows you the position of the SAS1B protein on the egg surface. This cartoon cuts through an ovary and at the arrows you can see eggs and how they associate with companion cells that are in bundles. We call these bundles of eggs and the companion cells follicles. Advanced follicles undergo ovulation. You can see a cumulus mass of, with an egg inside at the arrowhead. So when one sections through an ovary, one sees eggs at various stages of development and follicles, and the follicles grow and expand in size. The eggs grow in size and the follicles grow uh, accordingly. Now this is a cross section of an ovary that localizes this protein SAS1B the image demonstrates something really quite marvelous, and that is that only growing eggs are staining brown. Brown is indicating the location of the SAS1B protein. None of the other tissues that are in that ovary are staining. So, in fact, if you zoom in to the cortex, to the surface of the ovary, you see something even more amazing. And that is that the brown staining egg is located, it's on the left side, it's located first in the eggs that have started to grow and have reached the secondary stage of development. The dormant, quiescent eggs that have not begun to grow, the eggs you see on the right side of the, of the slide, the eggs that constitute the reserve of eggs do not stain for this protein. 
So among all the organs in the body, this protein that we've discovered, SAS1B, is only made in the pool of eggs that have begun to grow, and it is only found among all the tissues in the body in the egg. So taken together, these observations lead to a powerful new paradigm for cancer therapy. Because the SAS1B pro protein is found on the surface of tumors, but among the normal adult organs is only found in growing eggs, this protein is a target to deliver drugs selectively into cancer cells while not harming any other tissue in the body with the exception of the pool of growing eggs. And most importantly, because this protein is not in the dormant eggs, treatments that target the SAS1B protein are predicted to spare the reserve of eggs and allow fertility to return when the treatment ends. So the bottom line on this is that a highly restricted tumor-specific molecule has been discovered on the surface of cancer cells. And it offers us a strategy to limit the adverse side effects of cancer therapy on healthy, normal cells. So the discovery of this protein is leading to innovative new therapies. Hybrid drugs are being made that consist of two parts a biological component made of an antibody that you see in red there, and a payload of various types. These are lethal payloads, either specific drugs or radioactive elements, and we're linking these payloads to the antibody with a linker arm. We refer to these hybrid molecules as antibody drug conjugates. So how does it work? The antibody with its payload is infused into the bloodstream of the patient. The antibody binds to the SAS1B protein on the surface of the cancer cells. The antibody drug is then internalized and the payload is released inside the cancer cells. This results in tumor cell death. This type of antibody drug directed to a tumor-specific protein represents a form of targeted therapy. These microscopic images show you portions of uterine and breast tumors. Again, they're stained brown for this tumor marker, this protein SAS1B. Diagnostic tests that we've developed like this determine exactly which patient's tumors are SAS1B positive, and these diagnostic tests then allow us to pinpoint precisely those patients who should be treated with the targeted therapy, and this then subsequently limits unnecessary treatment of patients that will not respond. The diagnostic test thus allows us to tailor customized treatment to the characteristics of an individual tumor a form of personalized medicine. This table is showing you some of the cancers in which the SAS1B protein has been localized. It shows you the percent of tumors that are positive for the SAS1B protein, and it shows you the number of patients in the United States who might be helped by an SAS1 targeted drug. Some of the most deadly and hard to treat cancers are positive for the SAS1B protein, like ovarian and pancreatic tumors. And nearly 500,000 cases of cancer in the US each year are predicted to be helped by a therapeutic that targets the SAS1B protein. Here's what a monolayer of cancer cells looks like through the microscope. You can see there are some sort of dim outlines of the edges of the cell bodies and they're growing as sort of a smooth, translucent lawn. 
This is what that same cell type looks like after we've treated it with an antibody drug to SAS1B. You can see the cells are all rounding up to die. And I'm going to zoom in now for you so you can look at a very high resolution picture of cancer cells treated with an antibody drug to SAS1B in the throes of extinction. This is a dying cancer cell. Its cytoplasm fills up with vacuoles. It looks sort of like cavitated Swiss cheese. This is another dying cancer cell. The nucleus is beginning to condense. And these are cancer cells after treatment with an SAS1B targeted therapy, and the cancer cells have died and released off of the, off of the plate. In high school biology, uh, we were all taught about embryonic development. And we were all taught this idea of differentiation. The way the egg begins to cleave, eventually forms a hollow ball of cells. That hollow ball of cells gastrulates, forms the three primary tissue layers. And from these three primary tissue layers derive all of our tissues, the beloved eyes those incomparable baby toes. We are all heirs to this new insight into the fundamental nature of cancer. And the new insight is that many cancer cells, when they go awry, de-differentiate. They go all the way back, reverting all the way back to the egg, to make proteins characteristic of eggs. And this new insight is leading to path-breaking uh, new therapies, new diagnostic tests, and the ability to customize cancer treatment. So if we chart this idea, the history of it, basic research began on it back in 1995, nearly 20 years ago. We asked a very simple question, what are the proteins in an ovulated egg? The research gained momentum in 2001 from the first map of the human genome and the understanding that there's about 30,000 genes in the human body to consider. We spent years sifting through these different genes, identifying the ones that were specific to the egg. And this led in 2008 to our first idea that proteins unique to eggs were showing up in cancers. So it's this deliberate patient dedication to basic research over many years that forms the essential foundation for clinical breakthroughs. And today, more than ever, the public must demand that this bedrock of basic research not be undercut by a lack of political will. In recent months, a major US pharmaceutical company has partnered with the University of Virginia to spin out a biotechnology company that's built entirely around this insight into the fundamental nature of a wide range of cancers. Based on knowledge of the unique proteins that we found in the egg, we're discovering these cancer-specific targets. We're re-envisioning a world where precision therapeutics with minimal side effects will give us a type of chemotherapy that will transform the nature of cancer therapies in the future. The knowledge from the human genome is coming together with knowledge from developmental biology, knowledge from cancer biology. The human genome has just begun to flower, and I think the best is yet to come. <laughs>